Hello out there. I'm Robert. Welcome to Hobby King Live. Today we're going to talk about radios for aircraft. And this is a very, very deep pool you might be diving into if you're getting into RC and you could get very intimidated very quickly by the choices and the protocols and the wide variety of products out there. So this video may help kind of dispel some of the myths about radios and clear up a few things, help you get in the air sooner. So to begin with, most radios are similar to this kind of thing. They're called stick radios. They differ from surface radios, which are usually pistol grip type with a uh, trigger and a wheel for steering, stuff like that. We'll talk about that in another video sometime. But for aircraft, mainly airplanes, um, we can include drones and multi-copters and helis in this, but um, for drones and um, multi-copters, there are some more specific radios. Again, that may be another video, but we'll talk about that a little bit later as well. For the most part, all these radios will work with any aircraft you're talking about, okay? So RC planes, helicopters, multi-copters, and all that kind of stuff. So we go from the simplest to one of the most complicated. And if you're just starting out, you might want to start simple with a non-programmable standard kind of radio. Um, the only drawback to that is that um, you can't really grow any further with it. Once you grow past that with your skill set, you need to buy a new radio. It's not necessarily a bad thing because sometimes some people just want to start off with the simplest thing and go from there. So this is our HK T6A V2. This is a very simple but very, very competent radio. It works very well, comes with a receiver when you purchase it, and it's a great radio. The one feature that this does not have is it does not have reversing switches or anything like that on the surface of the radio. So if you need to do anything like that, reverse a channel or you know switch up a few things, you need to interface this with a computer, which is easily done through the port, and there's a cable for that. So um, if you were to get this radio, obviously there's a manual that comes with it and it describes how you can do all that programming with it. But out of the box with the receiver, this is a very simple to use radio and it works very, very well. And it's also, like I said, six channels, it's a T6A. So it's got knobs you can assign and also switches you can assign. Okay, so how many channels do you need? Well, most aircraft, a, a standard plane is going to have at least four controls that you need to have. You need to have throttle, aileron, elevator, and rudder. Okay, so you can steer the plane, roll the plane, bank the plane up and down and sideways and all that way. Okay, so minimum four channels. Uh, back in the old days when I learned, actually, we only had three channels. We had throttle, rudder, and elevator. We had no ailerons. <laughs> so that's going back a ways. Um, but uh, now most planes, most standard planes, are going to have at least those four channels. If you get into more advanced planes that have flaps, there's channel five. And then if you have retracts, uh, retractable landing gear, that's channel six. And a plane like our C-130, the Avo, Avio C-130, which is a brilliant plane, an awesome plane, great flyer. Uh, you can go, I think, up to nine channels on that because it's got two different sets of flaps, got a cargo door, uh, so, you know, it just adds up. So, you can look into, for something like that, you can look into a TX-10i from Orange, which is one of our brands, or the TX-6i, which is also from Orange. So, the difference, six channels, ten channels, pretty simple. Other than that, these radios are very, very similar. They are uh, DSMX or DSM2 compatible, depending on where you're located. And they come in mode one, mode two. So this is uh, mode one, uh, sorry, mode two. This is also mode two. This radio here is mode one. The throttle's on the right stick. So uh, in the US, most people fly mode two. In Europe, and I believe in Australia, they mostly fly mode one. But uh, you fly with what you, prefer, what you prefer, the way your thumbs and fingers work. <laughs> so you get what you like. Um, if you accidentally order a Mode 1, you can return it to us and we'll credit you and then you can, we'll just send out the uh, Mode 2 if you need it or, you know, whatever. It's all good. <laughs> so, again, um, so the Orange radios are computer programmed radios, which means that they have a uh, bevy of features built into them. And these are extremely programmable and very, very flexible radios. So what that means is that um, if you need to reverse a channel, you can go and do that. If you need to set up a mix, which is having one channel control another, you can do that with these. These have a whole bunch of mixes built in. Um, I use mixes, if you refer back to the Lancaster dual uh, differential thrust video, I, I talk about using mixes for the throttle to get the differential thrust moving on the Lancaster to get it to turn, because it doesn't have rudders, that plane. So, um, 
that's what a mix would be for is to, to set that kind of thing or some people use um, different aileron channels uh, for differential in the ailerons so again you could set that up with a mix programmable radios like this also come preset with features like elevon mixing so if you have a wing that doesn't have a separate elevator or you know horizontal stab in the back there um, and no vertical stab either you can set it up so that the ailerons also work as elevons so when you use elevator both aileron both surfaces go up or down um, but then as ailerons they go opposite and all that kind of stuff so again elevon mixing built into this also v-tail mixing like our durafly excalibur it has a v-tail it doesn't have a true you know cross tail on the excalibur again it's a v-tail which means that there's a rudder and elevator built onto that okay so the plane can either climb and turn using that and again that's called a v-tail and you can have a preset for that in these radios makes it very very simple to get up and running with that because otherwise that could be a pretty complicated thing to set up these radios make it very very simple both these radios also have a multitude of switches and all kinds of stuff you can assign to your different channels, throttle cut, uh, trainer ports, blah, 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 that kind of thing. On the subject of trainer ports, if you're just getting into the hobby, it might be a good idea to get a radio that has a trainer port so you can bind it with another radio that an instructor is controlling. So the instructor, you know, you have your radios connected, the instructor can take off for you, get you up in the air, get you nice and high, get you so you kind of feel comfortable looking at the plane up in the air like that, and then switch over to your radio and so now you're controlling the plane. And if you get into some trouble and start getting out of control or something's going on, then the instructor can switch back to his radio, take over control, get you sorted out, get you reacquainted with uh, your orientation. And uh, we've avoided a lot of crashes that way. I've trained a lot of people on radios. Uh, I've used these orange radios specifically. Got a lot of people up in the air. So it's a great feature to have. And then moving on up to the Radio Master TX16S, this is one of the more complicated radios we have. And complicated doesn't need to be scary. Complicated can be just good if you take it step by step and go into things very slowly and very simply. The radio does the same thing as any one of these, it just has more capabilities and more features that can build on those. So that's really it. Um, this radio also has a firmware system called OpenTX which allows you to kind of write your own custom software and macros into the radio, which allows it to do all kinds of cool pre-programmed things. It has voices in it, so it can talk to you and tell you when you put your flaps down, your flaps are at full or half or whatever, uh, gear down, that kind of thing. It has telemetry for um, your, you know, your battery voltage, your amp settings, uh, variometers for altimeters and all that kind of stuff. So, and uh, by the way, the orange radios also have telemetry features as well, so that's cool. The TX16S also has a trainer function, so you can get in the air with someone instructing you and connected and help you get started doing that. So, one thing about these radios is what protocol do you choose, okay? Again, protocol is the system that the radio uses to communicate with its receiver, okay? The receiver's in the plane, you're on the ground with the, with the radio, and they're talking back and forth to each other. Hopefully, <laughs> in ideal conditions, they should be. And um, <clears throat> so the protocol that they use, the communication method that they use, is again also very, quite varied and, and all over the place. Um, one of the most common is what the Orange uses, which is DSMX. Okay, it's also DSM2, which is the older version of DSMX. The DSMX is the new, more robust version. I encourage everybody to use that, but DSM2 is still very popular and uh, works great, works just fine. Um, <clears throat> this radio uses a uh, AFHDS, which is Advanced Frequency Hopping something something, <laughs> I forget, um, but that's what it starts at. You can find it online, it's, it's up there. And um, again, DSM2 and DSMX on these. The TX16S is a multi-protocol radio, meaning that it can bind to well, just about anything out there these days, which is kind of awesome, um, because there are so many different protocols, and you might get it something that has a certain thing built into it, and you want to fly that. Well, if you have one of these, it's no problem, because more than likely, it can bind to it. It'll bind with DSM2, DSMX, a few TABA protocols of all kinds, um, the FlySky protocol, AFHDS, um, what else, uh, FreeSky, um, uh, ACCST, it might even now have Access, which is the newest FreeSky protocol, or FRSky, depending on how you say it. Um, there are firmware updates coming for this radio as well that may even include more 
uh, protocols. I even found out that this will bind to my Airhogs Star Trek USS Enterprise. So I haven't done that yet, but it does do it because there's a protocol in here called NCC1701 and I was like, well, that's awesome. <laughs> so I'm going to try that out soon and uh, let you know how it goes. One other feature you want to look for too is how many model memories you can have in each radio. Okay, This radio will only bind to one receiver at a time. Okay, So you can only have one thing flying at, at a time with this. Um, so if you wanted another receiver to be able to fly on the same day with another plane, you'd have to get another radio. So again, beginner system, that's how it goes. These radios have uh, 20 model memory in each of them, so you can store 20 different models. So you can have a P-17, an F-4U, and a Tundra, and a Goblin, and a who knows what. But up to 20 on this. Uh, this radio, I believe, has 64 model memory in stock form. But because this has an SD card, you can store your memory, your models, on the SD card and then swap cards in and out. So if you use up all the 64 locations, you can swap cards and just have more models in the cards. So again, very cool feature, something that uh, makes this really stand out. And for the price of this radio, <clears throat> you can check on the, we can check on the site and look and see how much they are right now. But uh, it's a tremendous value, and it's the kind of thing you can grow into. So, but again, you got to look at you know what features you need and what price point you're looking at. And bottom line is that Hobby King has a radio for you, no matter what you need. If you need the simplest, middle ground, or the highest, most complicated, most complex radio, we've got it all. If you have any questions about it, please reach out to support. We have live chat 24/7. We have our ticket support system. We're always ready to answer your questions and help further if you have any more, you know, more ideas and more thoughts about this. And you can also reach out to us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Follow us on all our social media for updates and all that kind of cool stuff. So hit that subscribe and like button down there, please, and uh, tell us what you think. Please talk to us in the comments. I usually try to respond directly myself in those comments about the videos I do. So again, you have questions, ask them. I'll answer them, or somebody will. <laughs> all right, until next time, thanks. See you later.